boy we're here and we're starting to open up our double masters box i'm joined with my by my brother wes hello my, you guys might know him as serantis or as uh, tilly the turtle but today is a special time we are going to open this very expensive box of cardboard and uh see how it goes you know if uh you guys drop a follow there is a giveaway today of at least one pack of double masters absolutely free if you're local to the virginia beach hampton roads area i am i have no problem just dropping it off for you or i can send it to you no charge no shipping nothing but one of these packs is for a lucky follower today um that being said Let's open this bad boy. And uh, just a shout out, thank you very much, Atlantis Comics and Games. Uh, you are my favorite game store in the entire area. And yes, I have lived here for six years thanks to the Navy, and I've been to them all. You guys are the best one by far, even if it's a 30-minute drive for me. Just, I'll hop off that. You know what. Okay, so let's just make a very careful... Incision in the plastic, you know, so that we can sell the empty box on eBay later, make our money back. Ha 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 ha! Just kidding. I mean, the box has to be worth at least a hundred dollars. Oh, oh, of course, <laughs> at least, right? Actually, it was only three hundred and fifty bucks, but that's because we got um, the buy a box promos. Which now that the plastic's off, I'll go ahead and show off those real quick. So, apparently nowadays they have to incentivize you to buy magic cards in a comic shop, and they do that with buy a box promos. Um, if I had gone online, A, I would not have been able to support one of my favorite comic book shops in the area, and B, I would not have been able to get a foil Wrath of God or a foil Cord of Calling. And I think that's really nice that Wizards does stuff like this to help support the comic shops. Because, again, no one, I mean, before Arena, zero people would play Magic the Gathering without comic shops. So, definitely worthwhile. And if you guys have a chance, and if you have the extra spending cash, especially in a time like this, support those guys. Because I've seen, in my 30-something years of life, so many wonderful comic shops just go <laughs> kaput. So... If you don't want to see that happen to our favorite shops, make sure you spend some money there. All right, so here's the Double Masters box. Let's, uh, let's open it up. <clears throat> there should be 24 packs and then a little pack of box toppers, which we got lucky. There have been people that have uh, not received their box toppers. So Wizards of the Coast, thank you for making sure that my box had it. I appreciate you. That's what I appreciate about you. Wes is shaking with excitement right now. But we're going to take the packs out. Ooh. Like, you forget playing Arena, like, how hefty a stack of cardboard like this can feel. And we're going to take this one right here with the worm coil engine. We're going to set that aside. Anybody today that drops a follow and just, you know, says something in chat, says hello. Um, of those people, one will be chosen for a free pack of Double Masters. If nobody says anything by the end of the stream, uh, well then, I'm going to open the pack and I'm to hell with all of you. That's fine. But, we'll do the first one. So, this one's got a dude on the inside with a crown. I haven't played Magic for 10 years, so I don't really know a lot of these. But, here's the first pack. Put that over here. Commander Cube in every format in between. They're still ma still advertising MTGO. That's pretty neat. All right, so we've got an elemental token. All right. Battle Rattle Shaman. Wow, what a common. That's not in the newest set. Oh, wait. Yes, it is. Okay, Executioner's Capsule. That's interesting. But let's get to the fun. Ooh, Sylvan Might. I remember that from Onslaught Block. Sift. Hmm. So let's get to our uncommons. Okay. So our uncommons. Gelatinous Genesis. Create XXX green ooze creature tokens. Very interesting. You can get one, one, one for three, or you can get two, two, twos for five, or you can get 
three three threes for six. Seven. <laughs> anyway. Ooh, Mishra's Factory. That is a great uncommon. What a card. Cool. And then Reclamation Sage. Uh, when it comes into play, it destroys a target artifact or an enchantment. I believe that's from Mirrodin, because I remember, I think, the... Green, white, astral slide deck. Really employing this very well against Affinity back in the day. All right, our first rare is Shamanic Revelation. Draw a card for each creature you control, and then Ferocious. You gain four life for each creature you control with power four or greater. And then we got a Bosch Iron Golem. And then for our foils, we have a Fairy. Uh, I would say Machinist, but it's Mechanist. And a Golem Skin Gauntlets. Okay. So we'll keep the foils and the rares and the uncommons in their own pile. And then we'll put the commons off in their own. And now I'm going to let my brother open a pack because I think he might have I a might heart explode. attack. Great. You fool. Oh, thanks, Atlantis. They said good luck on your pulls. Oh. Hello. Looks like Atlantis Comet is going to win the pack of yeah, cards. You guys get the <laughs> giveaway. <laughs> if I can get the pack open. All right. Let's see. What's the token? Don't, don't, go, don't go skipping. You gotta, this is showmanship. And so got a treasure token. Oh, boy. That's not, that's not terrible to have. A lot of decks, good to have treasure tokens. I skipped that whole expansion, so really? I don't have any of the... I mean, I have some of the cards in Historic on Arena, but, you know, paper is not going to help. That's fair. So first common is going to be a Blood Briar. Okay. Hold it so the camera can see it. Watch. You have to keep in mind what they can see, because it's not very... Okay. This is my first time attempting to stream everyone. I apologize. <laughs> I'm sure they love you for it. It's okay. I mean, Watch our D&D stream later tonight, and you'll see what really <laughs> is so great about my brother. Trust Chilly me. time. <laughs> uh, so we have a Tumble Magnet, and there's a battlefield with three charge counters on it. Remove it, and tap target artifact or creature. That could be useful. A Silumger? Silumger? Sure. <laughs> Scavenger. Ooh, Lightning, lightning axe. axe. What a great combo. Yeah. That's a nice old redone card. That's cool art, too. Yeah. It's cool art. It's discard a card or pay five, right? That's the optional cost? Uh, as an additional cost. Yeah. Discard a card or pay five, yeah. So. That's what I meant by optional. Oh, okay. You can choose between yeah. one or the other. So it's either six or a discard. That's <laughs> and not it's five. And damage it's five to a damage. Creature, right? Yeah. Mm. It's one of my favorite uncommons of all or my favorite commons of all time. I used to love that in Limited. I remember, I think. Was it 10th edition where they reprinted it, or was it Zendikar? I can't remember. Zendikar. It was Zendikar? Yeah. Okay. So we have a Chromatic Star. That's also, yeah. Atlantis is like, oh, that is also a really good common. Yep, I 100% agree. Yeah. Building? I'm just kidding. I know you're not a building. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Magnifying Glass. Ooh, another, I've an, never seen it before. Another mana adding. Uh, another mana rock? Another mana adding Ooh. artifact. A mana rock that also gives you uh, a card draw, but not by sacrificing itself. That's interesting. Hmm. Got an Argaviv Arga Argivian Argivian <laughs> restoration. He's a marine, everybody. So I forgive, I just forgive him in advance for his reading skills. <laughs> Again, he's if not... you watch our D and D stream, just D and D things, you'll uh, you'll find more out about that. <laughs> he's not a Navy Chad like myself, you know. So, and then the last comment of the pack is a Thraben Inspector enters the battlefield. Investigate. Okay. And then on to the uncommons. I don't we... think that I could play cards that investigate and make clues without going like, oh, a clue! You know, <laughs> just having children in the era of blues clues. Like, <laughs> the people playing magic with me would absolutely hate me. So I'm glad I missed that expansion. Oh, I could, yeah. Either that What's or that? going for it. Either that or going for a... Um... A Sherlock Holmes type of vibe every time, <laughs> yeah. and you just flop between Blue's Clues and Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> so we've got a Riddle Smith. This is a heavy uh, artifact pack right here. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, draw a card. If you do, discard discard a card. Ah, so it's like a 
Merfolk looter for every time you cast an artifact. That's yeah. interesting. Uh, so, Welding Jar, it's a zero, zero casting cost, sacrifice it and regen an artifact. That had its That's place nice. back in the day in the original Affinity. Like, when I played Extended back in 2008, 2009, Welding Jar was almost an auto-include for your hmm. for your artifact creatures that came down. You know, I forget what it was called. Arcbound Ravager's one of them, but you had Ornithopter, and you had another one that was like seven mana, casting cost 3-3, three, three, but it had Affinity for artifacts. Yeah. So oftentimes you would play it. For free on turn three, but damn, yeah, it was nice because in the end, it also it's a free artifact, so it was very easy to include an in affinity because it basically took a mana off all your spells. Yeah, damn, big on the Cheerio deck. I've wanted Thanks, to build Jen. a Cheerio deck. We appreciate deck. it. So far, uh, we've made it through one pack. We've got a Bosch Iron Golem and a Shamanic Revelation. So you know, super exciting stuff there. But we're we're getting there. We like to talk. We're chatty. So we've got a Chief of the Foundry. Pretty good uncommon. And we'll then into separate the... the uncommons oh, yep. from the commons. Uncommon. What you guys will uncommon. also notice is that I'm anal uncommon. retentive. And my brother is not. Alright, and then on to the rares. We have a Ooh. Braids Conjurer Adept. So this is originally, Adept. I remember from... I think it was Planar Chaos was the set. It was the middle block of the Time Spiral block. And the original Braids was a two colorless, two black... Every, on everybody's turn, you sacrifice a permanent, and this was a fun, plane-shifted card that basically did the exact opposite and very flavorful. And if you know anything about lore, Braids was a member of the Cabal during the Odyssey block. And uh, she basically, like Chainer, like the Cabal Patriarch, they could all summon nightmares, and her speciality, obviously, was just taking stuff out. Very interesting, like, stacks-like card um, for your deck. But this is the obvious opposite. I'm sure it sees some interesting plays nowadays. Yeah. So next is going to be a Basilisk Collar. Mm. Equipped a creature has Death Touch and Life Link with a, with a <clears throat> pay one equip for two. Yeah, it's that's that's pretty strong right it's there. Pretty good. All right, then we go into the foils. So we've got another Riddle Smith foiled this time, and then a Valorous Stance. Choose one, target creature gains indestructible until the end of the turn, or destroy target creature with toughness four or greater for two casting cost. Well, that's two uncommon foils. That's nice. <clears throat> yeah. I'm not too familiar with a lot of the current archetypes as far as what's good and what's not, but I do remember when this first came out, and I do think that it is a really cool equipment card. Well, let's get reorganized here. <clears throat> Oops. Angel of the Dawn. Snacks? Measuring tape. Oh, I thought you said snacks. I was like, oh, I like snacks. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, for the next pack, we'll open this one. Because it's got a neat lady with weird metal hands on it. Sorry, I have to sit kind of awkwardly. Let's reorganize where the mic is. Okay, cool. So our token, token, it's a wolf token. Token creature wolf. <laughs> All right, so on our comments, I should say, we've got Divest. Uh, we get to take an artifact or a creature card away. Death Hood Cobra, a Braid. What an interesting card. It's like a sandstorm in an instant. Cool. You're a sandstorm. You don't know my life. <clears throat> At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a charge counter on a target artifact. Neat. <clears throat> oh, Parasitic Strix. So, for those of you guys that don't know, this is actually a pretty important common. Um, there's a blue-black 2-1 flyer from Invasion that comes into play, and when you play it, you have to bounce another card back to your hand. Like, that was a cycle in Invasion. Like, all, a lot of the cheaper... Multicolored cards made you return other cards to your hand, but what you would do now is with Aluren, you could play that card, which I... Man, I really wish I could remember what it was called, but it's one blue, one black, two one flyer, comes into play, return a creature to your hand, but you'd play that, play Strix, bounce... Uh, or you play Strix, play that, bounce Strix back to your hand, pay one life, return it to your hand, and then just rinse and repeat, and Strix's your win condition lets you... 
Um, basically kill them with 10 plays, and you can continue to gain life and return the Watchmajigger to your hand. But very interesting common. I like it a lot. Crusader of Audric. That's an interesting limited common. But here we are in our <clears throat> uncommons now. Painsmith. Uh, just keep in mind that if you guys want to be eligible for the pack giveaway, the one that I've set aside here with Worm Coil Engine, please drop a follow. Uh, so if you guys drop a follow and leave a comment in chat, I will roll randomly to see who gets a free pack of Double Masters. All right, so Painsmith, whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may have target creature get plus two, plus zero, and gain death touch until end of turn. Ooh, Pentad Prism. That's exciting. I love this card. What a ramper as far as uh, mana rocks go, right? Two mana for two mana. Put that shit in the bank. Glass Dust Hulk. <clears throat> Ooh, that's interesting. That's okay. one of my favorite cards. I used to have an artifact deck way back in the day when I, when I just first started playing Magic, and he was he was a solid card in it that I would always play. Fair enough. You say way back in the day, but back in well, my day. Yeah, back in the back <laughs> Thanks, in the Thanks, Frost. I appreciate it. <clears throat> I appreciate the follow. We uh, play a lot of Magic Arena during the week, and then we also have a and d stream on Saturday where I'm the DM. Wes here is... Um, a lovable turtle, or turtle, I guess. And then a few of my other friends play as well. But feel free to join us. I'd love to have you. Uh, Glass Dust Hulk. But yeah, back in my day, like I was saying, because before I got distracted, <laughs> Glass Dust Artifacts didn't have colors. Just saying. That's not a thing. The whole idea of an artifact is that it didn't have colors. But that's fine. That's just me being an old fart. Ooh. Nice. Oh, the campaign we're playing right now is Waterdeep Dragon Heist, and I can't really talk about a lot of the details for tonight because I have to surprise Wes, but tonight's episode is going to be especially fantastic. I can't wait. Um, but we got a Goblin Guide. I remember when this came out in Zendikar, and holy moly, what a card. Uh, two mana, two or one mana, two, two for haste, with haste. I mean, obviously now we've got cards like Fervent Champion, but back in the day, this was just like, oh, we got a mythic, nice. boys. We got a mythic. We got Karn Liberated. What a planeswalker. Also, Karn is my favorite lore character from the entire mythos of Magic the Gathering. He is my avatar on Arena. He is my card back on Arena. He's even my Twitter picture. He's my fave. Um, <clears throat> but he's been there pretty much since the beginning. I think the second or third book of the Urza Saga books is where Karn came in, and he's been around ever since. He was even a part of the Odyssey block at the end. He comes and saves Jessica, who just became a planeswalker. Or actually, that was the end of Onslaught block, but he comes and gets the Mirari at the end of Onslaught block and saves Jessica, who just became a planeswalker. I don't know what they're up to with those guys now, but... Man, Karn is just a cool character. And Teferi, Teferi's a coward, and I don't like him. Ooh, I received a message. We just got... We just... I wonder who it's from. Oh, it's from my, my Roomba, affectionately named Sphincter. Sphincter's battery is low. Place on home base. Thank you, Sphincter. But for right now, we're going to put you on vibrate so that hopefully you don't go crazy on me. Let's get to the foils. Sorry, this is a very uh, frenetic stream. All right, skill brand goblin, so common, not too shabby, and defiant salvager, aetherborn as a creature type. That's interesting. What set was that, Wes? Do you know? Uh, I do not know. Hmm. Very I do not interesting. Not know nearly as much as, <clears throat> as you do. Well, I've read all the books until they started to be bad, and that was right around. It was after Lorowin, so like. I don't even know if they made books for Zendikar, because I feel like that's when I stopped, because I stopped caring about lore. You want to get in here, bud? Sure. Never going to turn down magic pack. Not with your mouth, you fool. I got to crack the top of it. It took me ten it... minutes to open the last pack. If you get spit on a force of will, you're paying me for it. Okay. Kobe! I actually made that. <laughs> All right, so go for the token first. Got a germ token. 
Are they going to bring germ- is germs back? The whole idea Ooh. of double masters is like expensive reprints and whatnot. So, so a twisted abomination. Hmm. It's got to regenerate. So it's a six casting cost, five, three with pay one and regenerate it. That's not bad. Death Hood Cobra. A Sanctum Gargoyle. God, when it's the battlefield, goes. you may return to your artifact card from the graveyard to your hand. Okay. We have a Salivating Gremlins. <laughs> I have a few of those. <laughs> They're five, eight, and twelve years old. And mine's three and a half. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> we got another Golem Skin Gauntlet, but this one is not foiled. A Volshuk, Volshuk Gauntlets. Sure. I remember that art. I don't remember the card from I think that's uh, Mirrodin. Equipped to creatures get plus four, plus two, doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Interesting. So you would have to have something that... You'd probably have unta- to have two creatures so you could swap it back yep. and forth. But interesting. Okay. So Cloud Reader Sphinx. Ancestral Blade. When this enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white... Soldier creature token, that's, then attach this I'm to it. I'm sure that's already in standard. That makes me mad that that's in this set. <laughs> All right, and then on to uncommons. So we've got Ooh. Disciple of the Vault. Disciple of the Vault. What whenever, a card. whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may have target opponent lose one <clears throat> life. So fun fact: this was obviously in uh, Affinity before it got banned from Affinity. But my favorite deck of all time to feature Disciple of the Vault was a deck called Hulk Flash. It used the card Flash and Protean Hulk uh, to win before your opponent drew his first card of the game. And here's how. It had a Gemstone Cavern, which if you have it in your opening hand, comes into play with a luck counter on it. And if it has a luck counter on it, it adds a mana of any color to your mana pool. And then it had, uh, what was it called? Simeon Spirit Guide and Elvish Spirit Guide, both of which could be removed from your hand to add either a green or a red mana to your mana pool. So you'd use those two mana to play Flash, which allowed you to put any creature from your hand into play, and then you had to pay its cost, minus two colorless, or it got sacrificed. But you'd play Protean Hulk, and then immediately sacrifice it after its comes into play ability happened, which allows you to search for, I think, as many creature cards as you want with converted mana cost six or less total, and put them into play. So you'd grab four Disciples of the Vault and then a bunch of XX casting cost artifacts that would come to play after Disciples of the Vault were already in play and immediately die. So they just take four damage each time from each Disciple of the Vault and just win the game before that person even got to draw a card. And they'd run Pact of Negation instead of Force of Will because then you didn't even have to remove a card from your hand because you're going to win that turn. Pact of Negation counters their Force of Will. Boom. Most broken deck I've ever seen in my entire life. But it was so much fun. Damn. I feel like you don't have many of those anymore where it's like a first turn, second turn. I hope win. not. Yeah. It's not fun to play against. It's like, oh man, That's I just true. spent so much time creating this wonderful interactive deck and I just lost before I drew my first card. I get why that's banned. But it's also yeah. super fun if you're the guy that comes up with the idea of how to win before somebody before, draws their yeah. first card. With turn one win without them <laughs> even... Big Damn. brain mode for that Oof. guy, right? Oh man, like Zvi Mauschewitz back in the day was a, this big uh, card. This is I know most of this stuff because Inquest was a magazine when I was a kid, and I used to read it like it was fucking on fire. And uh, he was a a deck constructor, and he came up with so many different decks. And like one of them was this crazy Hearth Druid reanimator deck that dumped his whole grave library into his graveyard and made a giant hasty zombie that attacked the very like Jeez. turn two and that was in extended at the time it's just like oh gosh i miss those days Oof. so next we've got a i'm not even going to try to pronounce it guild mage selesnia thank you it's like been a token part of magic since 2006 whenever ravnica came out you son of a bitch how dare you how dare you how dare you <laughs> so we've got a trash for the trash for treasure sacrifice an artifact to cast this, and then return target artifact card from the graveyard to the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's like a reanimator tinker. Oh, got a mythic. All right, what do we get? Karthus Tyrant of Jund. Ooh, That's Jund is something I haven't heard in a while. 
As far as mythics go, not my favorite, but... When this enters the battlefield, gain control of all dragons, then untap all dragons. Other dragon creatures you control have haste. Okay. Not bad for a commander dragon tribal deck. Ooh, look at that nice. boy. Double mythic and in the pack. as it is on the, uh, on the giveaway pack, we've got a worm coil engine. Six casting cost, death touch lifelink. When this dies, create a 3-3 colorless worm artifact creature token with death touch and a 3-3 colorless worm artifact creature token with lifelink. Very Damn. nice, very nice. Double mythic pack, y'all. Double mythic all what the way across the pack. Angel of Dawn for our foils. We've got an Angel of Dawn. Oh, and a Pyrite Spell Bomb. A Pyrite Spell Bomb. That is a Mirrodin reprint, too. Nice. A shock Grenade right there. All right, what's next? Seems I seem to be a fan of this art. <laughs> Atlanta says, heck yeah! Very PG-13 of you. I like it. I guess that would be PG, really. But we're, we're keeping it pretty kosher as well, so... I appreciate it. Thank you, bud. Mm -hmm. All right, for our token, we have a golem. Golem artifact creature token. All right. Rapacious Dragoon. Uh, it's a 3-3 flyer that makes some treasure tokens. More mm -hmm. Sylvan Might. Okay. Toll Collector. Man, that's a neat, neat piece of art right there. I'll see if we can zoom in and get... Yeah, look at that. My webcam is so good. No, it's not. Bone Picker. Ooh, that's very interesting. Okay. A 3-2 flyer with Death Touch that costs three less if a creature died this turn. So any creature dies on your turn, you get to cast a 3-2 flying Death Touch creature for one black mana. Wow. That is a common right there, boys. Ooh. And girls. Golem Skin Gauntlets again. Iron League Steed. Fabricate. When it comes onto the battlefield... Put a plus one, plus one counter, or create a one, one. Oh, okay. Must have missed that set, too. Cathodian. I like that name a lot. <laughs> Cathodian. And he adds three colorless mana to the mana pool when he dies. That would have an interesting place in Especially Affinity, Especially if you too. have, like a, like, a black deck where it's sacrifice creatures to, like, you have a bunch of sacrifice creature cards. That I was could... thinking more along the lines of like Affinity, where you sacrifice this to your Arcbound Ravager for a plus one plus one counter, and, and then you get to play something else for free. Yeah. Crib Swap. I remember this from Lorwyn. It's a tribal instant, which means it has every creature type, and then it exiles target creature. Its controller creates a one one shapeshifter. It's a dopey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So into our uncommon sandstone oracle. When it enters the battlefield, choose an opponent. If that player has more cards in hand than you, draw cards equal to the difference. Okay. Skull munch. Skull. I almost said skull muncher. It's skull <laughs> mulcher because it's green. All right. As it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures, and each time you get a plus one plus one counter for that many creatures. Wow, that's interesting. Draw a card for each creature it devoured. That's not bad. And then Sarah Sphinx, Flying Vigilance. It's a nice little plane shifted card here. Basically a Sarah Angel, except blue. Mana Echoes. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may add an amount of colorless mana equal to the number of creatures you control that share a creature type with it. Mythic. And then, yeah, let's put our uncommons away, which is okay. That's a that's a mythic, I guess. And then Doomed Necromancer. Nice little reanimator rare there. Okay, so foils today we have Golem Artisan. And Sculpting Steel. We got our first rare foil, everyone. Nice. Sculpting Steel, I remember also from Mirrodin comes or Mirrodin Block, I'm not sure if it was Mirrodin itself, but it comes into play as a copy of any artifact on the battlefield. Blight Steel Colossus, anyone? Okay, so let's actually separate that from the others. And while you open this pack, I'm actually going to start get, grabbing some sleeves that I've got to put some of these in. Okay. Oh, you got a bunch of extra sleeves? Yeah, I have a box of dragon shield sleeves that I got before I got my Not Today Satan sleeves for my commander deck. Nice. So, oh, you got sleeves for your commander? Yeah. I didn't show you. No, last time we played Commander, you didn't have any sleeves on it. You said you were going to get sleeves. That's not true. I definitely had sleeves last time. I don't remember you when, when, when you see them. Do you remember those? Not today, Satan? I don't remember those, and now I love them. 
But this is again courtesy of uh, our friends at Atlantis Comics and Games. I saw these and I couldn't resist. I had to buy them. But that's for my Gavi Commander deck. I highly recommend them. They're very nice quality and also hilarious. All right. All right. So first token, we got a mirror, a mer token. Mir, mer. I've heard it said both ways. I'd probably say mer, but that's just my preference. I'm sure. I mean, this is America. You can pronounce things the way you want. I think of it as mir because it's m y, not an i. So it kind of goes with that y sound to me. That mir. It's a soft. It's a soft y. Uh... Well, it's also. Never mind. It's the only <laughs> consonant vowel. So you could do it however you want, yeah. Fair. So, for commons, we've got a Fierce Empath. Fierce Empath. Empath. <laughs> empath, Empath. Did you have your crayons this morning? You no, know. I did not. I had eggs and sausage. <laughs> doesn't hit the spot. Doesn't doesn't hit that hit the same way. Skin yeah. Brand Goblin. I like goblins. Crushing Vines. Vidalcan Infuser. How can I say Vidalkin, but I can't say... Mm, never mind. I've never heard anyone else say Vidalkin before, so... Oh, well... I don't even know if you're right. I'm gonna go with no, because fuck you. <laughs> I mean... Oops. Heck you. Heck you, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Eager Construct. Gleaming Barrier. Uh, per Parasitic, parasitic Strix. Strix. <laughs> Reason I joined the infantry and not went to college. Oh, Glint sleeve artisan. So those are going to be all of the uh, the commons for this one. So now we go into the uncommons. We've got a core tapper. <laughs> Put a... I tap that core. <clears throat> we have a hidden stockpile. Beginning of your end step of a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, create a 1 1 colorless servo artifact token. And then you can pay one, sacrifice a creature, and scry one. Okay. Huh. Dread Ooh. Return. Nice. I remember this back from the um, Dredge deck that first happened in Extended, where it brought back a 3 1 with haste every turn, and you basically dump a bunch of cards into your. Graveyard and Narc Amoebas, whenever they go from your deck to your graveyard, just immediately come into play. And then you'd use those Narc Amoebas to play Dread Return on a big-ass creature. Yeah. Or you'd use your, I think it was called Ick, something Ick, mm. man, it's been too long. But you'd sacrifice those creatures that are going to the graveyard anyway to reanimate something after you attack. It was unstoppable. So if you sacrifice three creatures to pay its flashback cost, would th would this be on top of the stack or below the stack from when you sacrifice those creatures? Cause... Since the creatures are... A part of the cost. Yeah. They're already in the graveyard when this is going to resolve. But hopefully you're not trying to reanimate an Archimeda. Hopefully you have better targets in the graveyard than That's you're true. sacrificing. Well, I was just thinking for some of those that have a, like a super powerful, like when this card hits the battlefield, that this happens. Mm -hmm. Possibly something like that. Yeah. Ooh, a rare land. Okay. So we have a Graven Cairns. Carnes. Ah, first saw these in Future Sight, and then I think they released this cycle in the Lorowin block. But yeah, what a what a set of lands. Not fetch lands though, so you know. Not what we wanted for Double Masters, everyone. So a champion of Lamholt. I'm gonna stop letting you open packs because you open bad cards. You're I opened the first <laughs> double mythic pack. Yeah, but they were trash. You're trash. <laughs> I'm trash. <laughs> Tilly will just die tonight, don't worry. I don't know. Is that one a good card, anyone? Creatures, creatures with power less than champion of Lamholt's power can't block creatures you control. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on champion of Lamholt. Lamholt. <laughs> so we've got a Vidalcan Infuser uh -huh. for a well, foil. Well, you did it. And then a Whisperer of the Wilds. <laughs> nice foils. Okay. I'm pulling good foils. I do like how foils and like the rare magic cards have these like counterfeit proof symbols on them now. That was pretty nice. See, even Atlanta says that I opened at least a decent card. Okay, okay. I don't know. I, I just like giving you crap. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> it's part of our dynamic, everyone. You should see the D&D &D stream. It's... Oops, last time... Last game... <laughs> 
I gave one of the players advantage for the remainder of the night, which actually ended up only being two rolls. Two rolls. <laughs> but if he drew with a Sharpie hair on his bald head to resemble my brother Wes's hairline, he got advantage for the rest of the night. And he did it. And I was impressed at his dedication, to say the least. All right, our token. Ooh, sapperling tokens. Who doesn't love sapperling tokens? Where's my verdant force at, y'all? All right, Sanctum Gargoyle again, Ancient Stirrings. Ancient Stirrings, I remember, from Zendikar, I think. Yeah, colorless card, so that makes sense. Looking for all Drazi stuff. Very cool. Probably belongs in some Tron deck, maybe. Relic Runner. Can't be blocked if you've cast a historic spell this turn. This sent me for a loop the first time I learned what historic was, because I, yeah. I had a legendary sorcery that I didn't realize like what the restrictions were to cast it. I had done the cube draft on Arena, and I was like, oh, you have to have a legendary permanent to cast this. I have two of those in my deck. Oh. I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Costly plunder. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact or a creature, draw that, two cards. Village Rites is better now. Village Rites is better than this. I mean, you could, I guess, sac in, in Vintage, you have a lot of zero casting cost um, mana rocks and stuff that you could sacrifice, but man. Okay. Alabaster Mage. Man, I remember this from something. It's been too long, y'all. It's been too long. Alabaster Mage. Alabaster Mage, everyone. Veteran Explorer. When he dies, each player may search their library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield. Then each player who searched their library this way shuffles it. Okay. Sentinel of the Pearl Trident. It's a merfolk, 3-3 three, three for 5 with a flash. <sighs> and then uh, you blink a historic permanent that you control. Artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. Cool. Topple the statue. Destroy target permanent if it's an artifact. Or tap target permanent and if it's an artifact, destroy it. And then you can draw a card. Oh boy. That's a rare... Stone Hewer Giant. We got a 4 4 with Vigilance that lets us look for an equipment card and put it onto the battlefield. Okay. Okay. Ooh, nice. and Rixmathies. Legendary creature Kraken, but is also a land. So as long as it's got a slumber counter on it, it's a land. Whenever you cast a spell, you can remove a slumber counter from a Rixmathies. And it's a 4 mana, 12 12, uh, and it adds. To one green, one blue to your mana pool. Mana pool. But that isn't, so that's going to get a sleeve in a second. Magnifying glass. Again, not a bad foil. And then executioner's capsule. Okay. You can take the next one while I sleeve this one up. The rest of these is pretty nice pull. Pretty nice pull. We're going to leave Karn on top right now. Because it's Karn. Because I love me some Karn. Alright, so token. Boom! Ooh, a copy token. That's a pretty cool token. What is it? Just a copy? Copy token. Huh. That's a pretty cool token. Fair enough. Never seen, never seen that. I have seen that ever before. So, another ancient steerings. Rapacious dragon. Dire fleet hoarder. Whisperer of the wilds. Iron League Steed, Corridor Monitor, Accomplished Auto Automaton, At Automaton. <laughs> this is worth it. Remember the streaming. Fallen. <laughs> and Ooh. remember the Fallen. Before you move on to the uncommons. Yes. So Atlanta says Ex Executioner's Capsule has a super fun combo with Salvaging Station from Fifth Dawn. Pay and sacrifice the capsule. Tap Salvaging Station to bring back a non creature artifact from the graveyard. Bring back the capsule, which triggers Salvaging Station's second ability, untapping, rinse and repeat. So, what do you get out of it exactly? So, this. So, you could just basically infinitely destroy creatures, is what you're saying? That's pretty neat. Very interesting. Huh. So, it's like a board wipe almost by itself, but you still have to pay the two mana, right? Hmm. I like looking. I like finding. It's very loops. valuable. Yeah, I like finding loops. Yeah, that that seems to be magic today. They've gotten a lot wet mm -hmm. away from like individually powerful cards and 
like sets like tribal making this tribe powerful and just making value combos like for example cat oven is a, what i would call a value combo it's like two cards that go together that don't break the game necessarily but generate so much value for you that it quickly outpaces other things that like just playing cards like mono red just plays cards and hopes that all those really good cards are good enough to beat you fast enough right? yeah but eventually mono red just if it can't beat you by t a certain turn about five then they're gonna not win yeah Oh, mono, running it in mono blank is jank. Nice. Mm. Yeah, I, I lost a I lost a one on arena the other day. It was uh, exquisite blood, I think it was, and then a uh, like a rare vampire. And it was like every time you lose life, or every time an opponent loses life, you gain life. And every time you gain life, opponent loses that much life. And it was an endless cycle. And it was one damage. Oh, did it use Davin, the new yes. not Davin, but yep. the new vampire dude? Yeah. And so I I lost by just mm. a continuous loop of one life game. Vito. One. Yeah, Don Vito. Yep. That's what I was thinking. Not Davin. Davin's a big blue weirdo looking guy. So into uncommons for this pack: weapons trainer. Un. Olven, Ol, Olvenwald Mysteries. This is worth it for you reading. You just needed the practice, buddy. I know. Ooh, a Kamigawa card, including the original Kamigawa art. I That's love a cool this. looking card. This can be attached only to a creature with power 3 or greater. Could a creature gets plus 3 plus 0 and has trample. And then on to rares. We have a Well of Ideas. When this enters the battlefield, draw two cards. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Hmm. At the beginning of your draw step, draw two additional cards. Okay. You just skip one. Oh. Ooh, voice whoops. of resurgence. They got stuck together. You're stuck together. Figure it you, out. You figured it out. You figured it out. I am spare parts, bud. Voice of Resurgence, when opponent casts a, whenever an opponent casts a spell during your turn or when Voice of Resurgence dies, create a green and white elemental token with, creature token with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So You're a mess, bud. I'm trying. So for foils, we have Fortify and Accomplished Automaton. You did it. I learned. <laughs> Backfest. It's all right. I know how to say words, and I still can't say them sometimes, so that's what happens. All right, let's move on to our next pack. And just so you guys know, we are, if you're just joining us a little late, we are doing the double Masters box topper last as the chef's kiss of the box, so to speak. You know, we want to save what hopefully isn't two upshifted cards for... The last little piece of it. That would be so disappointing if it was just like two expedition maps. Wouldn't that just be so sad? Another golem token. We've got some conclave naturalists. They say they're conclave naturalists, but they are wearing clothes, so that makes me beg to differ. Alright. Supernatural stamina. And it gets plus two, plus zero, and ooh. It brings it back to life if it dies. That's good card advantage. A lot of fun things about auras, or not auras necessarily, but this made me think of auras, right? A lot of the cards that you see that attach to other cards, like enchantments, etc., are negative card advantages in a lot of ways, because when you kill that creature, you lose both cards. So for the opponent's one card, or for their opponent's one creature, you just lost two cards, which is negative card advantage. But you'll see now... So many of those auras, or in this case, they invented equipment when I was towards the basically the main time where I played Magic back in the day to kind of counteract that negative card advantage. But you'll see auras that come into play, draw a card, or when this creature dies, draw a card, etc., etc., right? And that's to kind of combat how naturally bad auras were from a value perspective. So it's kind of fun that they've also got this to just increase even more value. Oop, I don't want to do that. Tamir Battle Rage. <sighs> it gains double strike until end of turn, and then it also gains trample until end of turn if you control a creature with power four or greater. Okay. It says it's Tamir, but it's just red. So you're a liar. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, some more artifact 
Resurrection stuff. Magnifying glass and chromatic star again. Apprentice wizard. He can filter one into three. Remember the fallen. Okay, on to our uncommons. If you control a forest rather than pay this spell's mana cost, you may have an opponent gain three life, and he gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. Death Reap Ritual. It's got Morbid. At the beginning of each end step, if a creature died this turn, you may draw a card. Clone Shell. Looks like it's wearing bell bottoms. <laughs> Right? Am yes. I right? Bell bottoms, everyone, in magic. Okay, and that's our uncommons. And then we've got Bacon. Beacon of Unrest. Put target artifact or creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Shuffle Beacon of Unrest into its owner's library. And then, ooh, Austere Command. Destroy all artifacts, destroy all enchantments, destroy all creatures with converted mana cost 3 or less, or destroy all creatures with converted mana cost 4 or greater. Okay, and then we have a Foil Urza's Mine, not bad, and a Foil Painsmith. Okay. You can't all be winners, folks. There you go. I'll try to make one a winner eventually. Make it a winner, Wes. You gotta tap on it. Tap on it real nice. But isn't tapping it, like, in, like, tapping the top of your deck is... Quitting, so wouldn't tapping the top. Tapping on the top of your deck is saying you don't want to cut. That's just, I don't want to cut, bud. Oh. Figure it out. Figure it out. You figure it out. So, another clue token. Ooh. Wait, can I see that? Yeah. Is that a bird? It looks like it. Or is what? it just a rack? I don't know. What's that prehistoric, like, flying thing? That's... Pterodactyl? No, 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 no. The, the one that starts with a Q. It has, like, a, like a 15 or a 16-foot wingspan, or... Oh, you're talking like about, like, Quetzalcoatl, the sky god of yeah, the... Yeah, the gigantic one that... It yeah, was, I could see that. It had, like, a 60-foot wingspan or something crazy like that. It's the largest flying creature to ever be discovered. I don't know if that's what it was, how it's pronounced, because that word is always... I don't know, like I said, it starts with a Q. Quetzal. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Aunt Le uh, Thank you, Atlantis. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So... Yep. We could probably start... <laughs> you don't want to try that one? Nope. You don't want to give that one a try? <laughs> nope. <laughs> So a Glaze Fiend, another one that was in that uh, artifact deck I told you about that I had when I was a kid. I'm pretty sure most teenage boys are Glaze Fiends. <laughs> <laughs> this is a strictly PG-13 uh, stream. Spin wing. A living weapon. When this equipment enters the battlefield, create a 0-0 black germ creature token, then attach it to this. Huh. Yeah, so if we see a batter skull, which I'm pretty sure was reprinted in this, like that combined with Stoneforge Mystic was absolutely crazy because when she comes into play, you can search for an equipment card and then you can pay one colorless, one white to put an equipment card from your hand. Careful, you're resting your hand on that. From your hand into play, and you just put this five mana uh, <laughs> equipment card that gave plus four, plus four, and I think trample and lifelink to the creature it made with it. Jeez. So, turn three, you just punch somebody in the face with this big old batter skull. That's insane. Very valuable. Another one, another That's relic valuable. runner, another costly plunder, and another giant sleeve artisan, or a glint sleeve artisan. So now we go into the uncommons, Thopter Foundry. Thopters are always nice. Jorah's. Jorah's familiar. So Jorah is basically Teferi's BFF. And if you look, that's Jorah right there on the arena screen. Hold on, let me see the map. Oh, okay. So if you guys, if I move this out of the way, right there is our friend Jorah, both of whom were mages at Urza's Mage Academy, otherwise known as Tolarian Academy, for those that remember. And she's immortal, but she is not a planeswalker because basically she had an accident with the time water when the whole academy blew up during the Frexian invasion slash Karn tried to time travel to save her but he traveled back too far blew up the whole island and it was separated into these little pockets of fast and slow time and uh because of that she's immortal forever and she's Teferi's best friend who is a planeswalker and therefore also immortal forever but she's the one that basically 
was able to <clears throat> get to Ferry out of his slow time bubble where he was constantly being exploded for forever, which is what triggered his Planeswalker Spark. Huh. Interesting stuff that Back I did when not Planeswalkers know. were immortal gods instead of what they are now, which is another thing that kind of bothers me about Magic's story. Because it used to be that you and I were the Planeswalkers. We were the ones playing the cards. We were the Planeswalkers. Yeah. But now they had to have a reason to come up with this Planeswalker permanent card. So they, story and lore-wise, kind of came up with this depowering of Planeswalkers where now they're not just unbeatable, immortal kind of Planeswalkers. There were ways to kill Planeswalkers back in the day, mostly by scrambling their brains like Yagmoth yeah. to an older Planeswalker. Uh, that was a, an ally of Urza early on. but uh, Or not an ally of Urza, but an ally of um, Yagmoth's main original adversary story that if you guys, adversary, if you guys ever watched the, or read this Thrawn book, you'd read about it. But otherwise, they were pretty much... Like, as long as they could think, they existed and they could not be harmed. So... Hmm. Until you just mess with their brain, planeswalkers were indestructible. But now they can be killed. Yeah. So. Hmm. So next we've got a flicker wisp. Flicker wisp. What a card! As this... someone that loves blink, that is one of my favorites. When this enters the battlefield, exile another target permanent. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So it really gets extra value out of other cards, comes into play abilities. All right, so now we're going to the rares. We've got a Boon Reflection. If you gain life, gain twice that much life instead. That's... Damn. Okay. And then a first legendary creature, I'm pretty sure, of the uh, of the pull. We've got a Hana Ship's Navigator. That's a great commander card. Turn target artifact uh, or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. With a uh, three casting cost, not bad. Not bad at all. So then we've got for our foils, we've got a gleaming barrier and a sandstone oracle. Okay. Hmm. We'll go ahead and sleeve up that Hannah's or, or Hannah the ship's navigator. Okay. AKA uh, Gerard's girlfriend. If you guys remember Gerard, he was a white legendary. He was the captain of the Weatherlight before Jora, and uh, he basically saved Dominaria and Dominia being its original name, but Dominaria from the Phyrexian invasion, basically by crashing into the moon. Nice. There was something called the Null Moon that orbited around Dominaria, and it was just chock full of white mana. It was an old experiment of Urza's, and uh, Gerard crashed the weatherlight into it, causing that plethora of white mana to just crash into the surface of Dominaria and destroying the Phyrexian invasion. As we saw during the Time Spiral block, Yogmoth still exists. He's in Urborg, but he is very weak. Now, I don't know what happened as far as Yogmoth goes in like the Phyrexian Remergence sets that came out after I quit for a while. But maybe he's permanent dead now, but he was definitely still there. He whispered to Vinzer. Soldier creature took. Okay. Respectable. Also like the representation, because female soldiers are sweet. Super badass. Heartless Pillage. Target opponent discards two cards, and if you attack this turn, we get a treasure. Clear Shot. Might of the Masses. It's very interesting. It gives you plus one, plus one for each creature you control, so it could be more valuable than a giant growth. Brainstorm. What a card. Ugh, love Brainstorm. That is just one of Blue's best cards. Expedition Map. A much-needed reprint, let's all be honest here. Like, who doesn't want that for Commander, right? One casting cost, search up any land, put it in your hand. It's also good for Tron. Iron Bully. Bully. It's got Menace, and when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Cool. Corridor Monitor, that's in standard. Ancestral Blade, that's in standard. Ooh, Vampire Hex Mage. Now, I remember this. That means that it's from one of the sets that I used to play, and I remember it from around the cold snap time so it had to have been either ravnica or something yeah i feel like this came out and the reason that i remember it from cold snap is that we comboed vampire hex mage with dark depths which was a land that had a bunch of counters on it and when all those counters went away you got a i think it was like a 2020 indestructible flying creature marat lodge 
So yeah, Vampire Hex Mage. Not a bad uncommon. Dismantle. Destroy target artifact. Uh, if it had any counters on it, put that many plus one plus one counters or charge counters on an artifact you control. Man, I'd love to use that on a Crystalline Giant every now and then. That would be super fun. Path to Exile. Whoa. That is a worthwhile uncommon. Then we got Twilight Mire and an Endless Atlas. Tap. It's two. Tap two to draw a card. And then only if you control three or more lands with the same name. Okay. Then we got a Sift Foil and a Costly Plunder Foil. Foil. I'm going to sleeve this bad boy. Yeah. And you can go next with that. Yeah, there's the picture of the Quetzal, by the way. That's oh, why I said wow. it kind of looked like it with the weird beak. And it's a, it was a Show the folks at home. So, when I was talking about that token card, <laughs> that's the Quetzal. So let's and do a comparison. For reference, it was as tall as a giraffe, but it was a flying bird. And that's the... It's having trouble focusing because, you know, autofocus is so good, but... That's the token that we were talking about, and that's the... And that's the bird thing. The burb that we were so. talking about. Like you said, it kind of looked like it, and when I saw it, I instantly thought about it. It's funny that whenever I think of it, because it sounds so much like pretzel, I can't help but a think pretzel about... A pretzel bird? Pretzel bird, exactly. <laughs> like, I just want a big old soft pretzel bird right now, please. Thank you. All right, so token is going to be an Aldrazi spawn token. Huh. That'll be useful, especially with some of the root prints in this set. Yeah. So another Executioner's Capsule, another Battle Rattle Shaman, Shaman. Brain limited, not anywhere else. Revoke Existence. That's not bad for a uh, for two casting costs. Exile Target Artifact or Enchantment. Mm -hmm. uh, Balduvian Rage, Sift, Mirror Retriever, Urza's Mine. That's a good comment. Crusader of Ordek. Audric. 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 This is PG-13, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> so on to Uncommons, we have Treasure Mage, Fatal Push. I like Fatal Push. What's that one do again? Uh, it's a one casting cost, destroy target creature if it has converted mana cost two or less. And then it has Revolt, destroy that creature if it has converted mana cost four or less. Instead, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn. Mm. A Cogwork Assembler. And then into we got a mythic. Yeah, we did. Trinosphere. Trinosphere. As long as that bad boy as long as this is yeah. untapped, each spell that would cost less than three mana to cast costs three mana to cast. Oh. Wow. And then we have a blood blood spore Threnex. Okay. What does it do? Oh, uh, it's got devour one. Uh, it's a four casting cost. Devour one. Each other creature you control enters the battlefield. Uh, with an additional X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on Bloodspore Threnex. Okay. That's not bad. Not bad. And then we have an Alabaster Mage and a Surge Node for the foils. You're a Surge Node. <laughs> Alright, what's next? We'll do this nice middle one. It's got the Worm Coil engine on it. All right. Hello, everybody that is watching from home. If you guys have joined since we started this, we're opening and unboxing a box of Double Masters. There is a giveaway. If you guys drop a follow and drop a comment in chat, uh, we've got one pack just for anybody. If you're local to Hampton Roads, I'll be happy to just take it wherever or meet you at Atlantis, for example, and give it to you. Or uh, I will ship it for free wherever you're at. Um, but, hey. We stream Magic the Gathering Arena. We stream Dungeons & Dragons. Like we said, Waterdeep Dragon Heist, one of the best campaigns in D&D uh, &D 5th Edition right now. And we're just a bunch of degenerates, so it ends up being hilarious most of the time. So, yeah. Our token. Ooh, Elephant Token. Nice. Call of the Herd, anyone? That was such a great value card back in the day. It was like a... I think it was 3 mana and then 4 mana flashback cost, and you got a 3-3 three, three elephant each time. So wow. one card got you two three threes. Wonderful, wonderful value. Dire Fleet Hoarder, Bloodbriar, Tumble Magnet. I don't know what this does. I haven't even read it yet, but I love the name Tumble Magnet and the fact that it looks like a fidget spinner to me is just like. <laughs> can you imagine like Yogmoth is just chilling out on his throne, just fidget spinning the entire time? Who doesn't love it? 
Uh, so it removes the charge counter from itself after having three on it when it comes into play to tap target creature or artifact. Okay. Salomgar Scavenger, we've seen some of those. Oh, it's a zombie bird. Ooh, another Urza land, which the box topper lands, Urza and the box topper Karn, like everybody was hating on the art originally. I love that art personally. It just reminds me of classic Magic the Gathering art so much. And Karn's my homeboy, so... I, I would be very happy if one of these is any of those alternate arts. All right, so we've got an Icker Wellspring. When it comes into play or goes to the graveyard, we draw a card. Huh. Cool. Definitely an interesting card for, like, I, I guess Affinity would be yeah. pretty valuable because you play it for two. It counts as an artifact. You draw two cards off of it if you sacrifice it to your Arc Baron Ravager. Alright, fortify. Buried ruin! Come to our buried ruin, everyone! It's really nice! It's a land that adds colorless, and then you can sacrifice it to return target artifact from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. Sphinx of the Guild Pact. It's all colors, and it's hexproof from monocolored. Okay. Mersmith. Uh, whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may pay one, and if you do, create a 1 1 colorless mer creature token. Ooh. Ooh, okay. So we got Dark Depths today as one of our mythics, which this is the card I was talking about with Vampire Hex Mage. So it comes into play with 10 ice counters on it. You can pay three to remove one, or you can sacrifice your Vampire Hex Mage and remove all of them at the same time and get a big old 2020 flying indestructible avatar creature token. Nice. We will sleeve that up. <gasps> Ooh, and we got a Stoneforge Mystic, guys. Thank God it's unbanned, which is another unfortunate thing about another card in this set. Um, what is it called? It's like, it's casting cost is XX, and it comes into play with so many. Plus one, plus one. It's like Walking Ballista, I think it's the name. But it used to com like combo with Heliod very well, where you'd give it Death Touch, and you could remove a plus one, plus one counter to deal one damage to any target. And you could just keep putting plus one plus one counters on it with Heliod, so as long as it had two or more, you just deal infinite damage and gain yeah. infinite life. So yeah, they banned it though because Wizard hates us. So Stoneforge, Mystic, and Dark Depths, what a what a pack! What a pack right there, guys. Nice. If I had been my 16 or 17 year old self back in the day and opened a pack with both of those cards in it, A, not possible, but B, how cool. That would be so neat. Ooh, and a foil crib swap. And a foil clone shell. But let's get these guys into the sleeve. Bell bottoms. The bell bottoms. The bell bottoms <laughs> are real, everyone. I'm telling you. Look at them. You can't tell by the way I use my work. I'm a, I'm a thing. I'm a melty mercury thing. I'm the bad guy from Terminator 2. We've been rewatching The Office recently, and so that we just oh. watched that episode where, they're, where they just start singing that song randomly in The Office. I have so. to tell you that I have never made it past season one of The Office. That being said, I love Parks and Rec, which I understand they're both similar, but like the first couple of seasons of The Office so cringy. is just so cringy. I can't get past it. Really cringy. All right, so first token. It's going to be a worm token. Worm. <laughs> That's the lifelink one. We need yeah. to find the death link one. Death link. Death touch one. Death link. All right, so we have another uh, scavenger. Copywritten. Death link. Another crushing vines. Ooh, another lightning axe. Nice. Another costly plunder. Core Wellspring, Skin Wing, Parasitic Strix, Thraben Instigate, uh, Inspector, is not Instigator. Thraben <laughs> <laughs> This is supposed to be PG-13. <laughs> I feel like our D&D That is PG-13. I feel like our D&D stream is more R. And oh, our D&D stream, because you guys can't stop dropping F-bombs, is definitely rated R. That's why I don't really <laughs> post it in discords or anything, because I'm afraid that it'll get us banned. If you guys clean it up, I'll definitely do it. But for those of people... We try. <laughs> if you guys want to follow my link in my description to my YouTube channel, you can get caught up on all the wonders of hashtag just d, d things that you want. It's an evolution. We only started doing this whole online streaming thing about four sessions in right after the lockdown started. And I had no idea what I was doing, either making videos or streaming. Since then, we've gotten a lot better. But at first... If you want to put it on a tab in the background and listen to it, that's what I recommend. But 
as we got better at making videos and playing D and D, there's definitely, definitely some definitely interesting stuff to watch. It's more fun to watch at that point. But yeah. All right. So on to uncommons. We have a ravenous intruder, a fencing ace, double uh, two casting cost one one double strike. I think that was one of the first double strike cards, if I remember right. Huh. Uh, Galvanic, Galvanic Blast. Blast. That is an uncommon. That's, that's nice. Mm. And then on to rares. We have a Mana Reflection. If you tap permanent for mana, it produces twice as much. Twice as much of that mana instead. So, fun fact. You guys might have seen these reflections, like we had the Boon Reflection as well earlier. The, the whole idea is that, oh, these double the thing, and this is double masters, so it was Wizard's excuse to give us bad cards in this set. They included the entire reflection cycle. And yes, we are mad about it, but no, we're not going to talk about it all day. So, Paladin Bree came back on. Hey, man! You just you just got in the running for this pack, buddy. We got a pack of Double Masters here. So we've, we've got, got a... two people, UV Frost and Paladin Bri. Brian, my buddy, who's always watching me stream. We've got a Greater Good. Sacrifice a creature, draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature power, and then discard three cards. All right. And then we have an Ancient Stirrings and a Brimstone Volley for the foils of the pack. Okay. Very cool. So far, um, Brian, to get you caught up, we've got some highlights. We've gotten a Darkest Deaths, a Stoneforge Mystic, a Trinisphere. Uh, we've got Hannah Ships Navigator, Karn. Uh, we got a Worm Coil Engine. And a uh, along with a couple of, like, a foil sculpting ste steel. We got Mana Echoes as a mythic. Uh, we got Karthus. But uh, so far, it's pretty good. I will definitely uh, be streaming later tonight, but that'll be D&D, &D, obviously. But, yeah, we're going to be doing just an unboxing for right now, because after this, I actually have to kick Wes out and prepare some things for D&D &D tonight. But I decided that I was just going to do it. Since no one really did anything for the giveaway, I might buy another box of this. I'm not sure. But um, for right now, we're doing a giveaway for this stream and this stream only. Thank you, bud. Mm -hmm. Our token. Ooh, squirrel, oh, squirrel tokens. Token. I love squirrels. <laughs> Why, what is so exciting about squirrel tokens? Oh, squirrel. man. What was it? The hermit card back in the Urza block that just made squirrels, and it was just such a meme deck before memes were squirrel a meme. Hermit. Squirrel Hermit, yeah. Driver of the Dead. Mm, who doesn't love a nice servant? Okay. Orcish Vandal. Fierce Empath. They're just tossing cards in here willy-nilly. Uh, Mer Retriever, that's a great one. Veld Confuser. Peace Strider. Another Urza Land. Really good for Tron. It's hard to find those a lot these days because, I mean, 9th edition... 9th edition was what, at least 10 years ago? Phew. <sighs> Crazy. Crazy to think about that. All right. Now, Fencing Ace is another. We got another uncommon Fencing Ace. A Woodland Champion. Ooh, we got another Path to Exile. What a card. Ooh, and we got Spellskite. Uh, two colorless casting costs for one Phyrexian Blue. You can change the target of target spell to or ability to Spellskite, and you can pay it either with two life or one blue, which is pretty valuable. And he's got zero power for toughness. So, you know, you can just absorb all that burn, baby. All right. So we'll put that to get sleeved. Ooh, and then we get Riss the Redeemed. Nice tribal card. Create a 1-1 one, one green and white elf creature token. And then for each token you control, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Very good. Very good. Okay. We'll go ahead and sleeve that one, too. And then Salivating Gremlins. Like I said, we've got <laughs> some of those. And then Silumgar Scavenger is our foils. All right, I'm going to sleeve these up if you want to start the next one. You're just going right across the top? So far. Okay. It seems to be working out for me. All right. Token for this is another germ token. One of my favorite tokens behind squirrels. <laughs> Got a divest, a germ token, a death hood cobra, a braid, two casting cost deals three damage to target creature or destroy target artifact. Okay, a dire fleet hoarder, another Urza's tower. Okay, um, Ecor wellspring. 
What's up? Icker. Icker. Icker Wellspring. <laughs> Cloud Reader Sphinx. Strength of Arms. So those are going to be the commons for the pack. We've got a Valor in Akros. Uh, ooh. Big Jellyfish. Esper, <laughs> Esperzoa. Flying and at the beginning of your upkeep, return an artifact you control to its owner's hand. Huh. Drown in Sorrow. <laughs> Everyday life. God, Wes, way to be emo. <laughs> <laughs> we have, for rares, we have an Awakening Zone. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may create a 0-1 Eldrazi, colorless Eldrazi spawn creature token. It has sacrifice it and add a... Um... One colorless. So, I remember they changed it from colorless to what is... That symbol means one colorless mana. Oh, I thought there was another name for it. I thought they had added something. I don't know if there's another name for it, but that's what it is. Uh, Magus of the Will. Oh, okay. Basically a Yawgmoth Will on a stick. Yep. Pay three, tap it, exile it. Um, until the end of the turn, you may play in lands and cast spells from your graveyard. If a card would be put into your graveyard from anywhere this turn, exile that card instead. And then for uh, foils, we have a Metal Spinner's Puzzle Knot. Kind of like a big fidget spinner. Mm-hmm. And a, ooh, a foil, uh, foil rare. We have a Grand Architect. Other other blue creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Uh, pay one, target artifact creatures. Uh, target artifact creature becomes blue until the end of the turn, and then tap un, tap, tap an untapped blue creature you control, add two colorless. Spend this mana to only cast artifact spells or activate abilities of other artifacts. Very nice. All right. Let's see. Much value. Such wow. On to the next one. Got about six left. Still got the bonus pack to give away. And let's see here. All right. So our token is another treasure token, which just looks cool. Looks like Smog would be hanging out in that card. You know, you'd be like, mm, don't touch my stuff. Because, mm. you know, that's what Benedict Cumberbatch sounds like. All right. Uh, Sylvan Might, Toll Collector, Bone Picker, Salivating Gremlins, everybody's favorite joke, some Spell Bombs. Fairy Mechanist. By this point, we've opened a lot of these commons already, so that's why I'm being a little bit fast. Surge Node. <laughs> uh, Angel of Dawn. And then, into our uncommons, we've got... A Dark Steel Citadel. Ooh. Ah. Okay. Gore Clan Rampager. Trample and Blood Rush. Uh, we can discard it to give target attacking creature plus four, plus four, and trample until end of turn. Basalt Monolith. Three, doesn't untap during your untap step, adds three, and then it untaps Basalt Monolith. So, kind of like Grim Monolith, but instead, it costs a little bit more, and then, uh, you know, all you need is Zerta, infinite mana. Cool artwork, though. Kind yeah, of goes very, along with that Karn cool. look, that Karn look of artwork. Yeah. And then, oh man, Inkwell Leviathan. What an exciting rare to have today, boys. Ooh, but then we get an Academy of Ruins. That's a card. So the Academy in question here is, of course, the Tolarian Academy. And this, I think, came out in either... I think it was the Time Spiral block, but for one colorless, one blue, you can put target artifact from your graveyard on top of your library. Very, very nice. This is like our third foil salivating gremlins. I'm going to frame them and just put one each in my kids' rooms. It's like, you don't forget what to, you are. you got to have me, give me one to frame in Adams. <laughs> and then Iron Bully. Very nice. Okay, let me frame. Let me frame. Let me sleeve the Academy Ruins while you start on the next one. All right. Homie just wants to force a will. That's what we want. I would love for it to be my box topper because that art is li- is ridiculous, but we'll see. What exactly is the box topper? It's the only place where you can get the alternate art mm-hmm. for cards without buying the one hundred plus dollar VIP VIP max. Oh, none of them can be foil as a regular box topper, but they've got some really cool art. So oh, okay. I've never bought like a booster box or anything, so I've never. I don't, I don't think know I've if ever it's gotten for every set. It's just. As far as I know, it's just this one. But oh, maybe okay. there are box toppers for other sets more recently that I just don't know about. This is the first box I've bought in 10 years easily. Oh, okay. I think Zendikar was the last time I bought a booster box. Yeah. The original Zendikar. Now, the only booster box I remember getting when I was a kid, my dad would get the uh, the D&D minis. 
nice. booster boxes yeah. and we would open those together. So yeah, that I was had super a lot cool. Of those too. A lot of Pathfinder minis too. Yep. I mean, so, you can, you've seen them. I have them in bags. So yep. Fishing tackle boxes. So. Well, the Pathfinder minis were just from the warehouse because my dad was at Paizo. So. Oh, yeah. You led a privileged <laughs> life of having a father that worked for a really cool company. I hate you. Eh. Ooh, that's a another Urza's mine. Okay. Metallic rebuke. Another big fuzzle, uh, puzzle, puzzle knot. Fidget spinner. Fidget spinner. <laughs> Peace strider and strength of arms. So those are going to be the commons. All right. Bloodshot trainee. I don't think I've seen this one. It's a goblin. Yep. Tap it. Uh, this deals four damage to target creature. Activate its ability only if this power is four or greater. Hmm. Huh. All right. Got an Ooh, is, is it, it charm. charm? That's a great card. Is it charm's nice. Choose one counter target non creature spell unless the controller pays two. Uh, is it charm deals two damage to target creature or draw two cards then dis discard two cards. Uh, and then we have a rush of knowledge. Draw cards equal to the highest converted mana cost among permanents you control. Go back to that one first. So fun fact: this I think is somewhere in the onslaught block. I might. It might be scourge. I want to say because I think scourge's theme was you just had big creatures. But the artwork is the original artwork featuring Ixidor, this crazy wizard that lost his love in the, the fighting pits of the Cabal back in the day, went insane in the desert, and then just discovered the ability to literally create stuff from nothing. All the morph stuff, all of the illusion stuff, is because this guy went crazy in the desert and had this insane magical power and just made it all. So, this is a fun fact about Ixidor. Alright, on to the rares. We have an Aethersworn... Uh, Canisist. Canonist. Canonist. <laughs> Each player who casts a non-artifact spell this turn can't cast additional non-artifact spells. Ooh. And then a Brutaclad Telcor Engineer. Creature tokens you control have haste. At the beginning of, a, of combat on your turn, create a 2-1 blue mirror artifact creature token. Then you may choose a token you control. If you do, each other token you control becomes a copy of that token. Wow. Ooh. Okay. And then we have a Sphinx and a Kozilek Predator <laughs> for the oils. All right, very cool. All right, let's put those there. I'll scoot my chair back in. <clears throat> All right, let's get the next one. Do, 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 do. Hold on, let me see. All right. If you guys haven't had a chance to drop a follow or say hello in chat, please make sure you do so that you guys are eligible for maybe getting a free pack of Magic the Gathering cards. Maybe you'll get the Force of Will and I'll be sad. All right. Eldrazi Spawn is our creature token. And we got Cast Down, which is pretty nice. Destroy target non-legendary creature. Darksteel Axe. Elvish Aberration, which I believe was, again, Scourge. Scourge was big big into big mana cost, big power creatures. Um, 500 gems for 1750 gold. Homeboy's got that. Looks like I'm getting some gems, y'all. I don't. I'm going to have to start grinding out some... Uh... <laughs> it, happened, it goes away today, so you better... Oh, I know. Do. I'm going to start grinding out stuff. All right. Sanctum Spirit. Ooh, look at that nice little... That's nice art. I like that. Discard a historic card. It gains indestructible. Cool. Metamorphose. That is nice. an expensive uncommon. Very nice. I was surprised when I saw this come out. I think this came out in Lorwyn, but I'm not 100% sure. But Wizards for the longest time, Urza's Bobble, for example, is this cantrip that costs zero, that uh, drew, drew a card and did something pretty, you know, benign. But what it really does is it allows you to run a 56 card deck. And that's, again, what Manamorphose allows you to do with some restrictions, obviously. You have to wait until you have two land to play it or two mana to play it. But Manamorphose is one of those cards that basically allows you to run a 56-card deck, which in some combo decks, in some aggro decks, is very valuable. You just basically have a free card here, and it's insane. All right. Culling Die. You okay? Yep. There's a TV there. We just put it there. You know. Yep. Just bonk your noggin yep. on it. <laughs> this is a really cool piece of art that I really it kind of harkens back to like alien to me like alien aliens of the you know Ridley Scott era but uh, you sacrifice a creature put a charge counter on it and then if you sacrifice it you draw a card for each charge counter on it so eh, that's not too bad cranial plating that that's cool is just like such a staple of 
<laughs> affinity decks, you know? And the fact that you can equip it at instant speed made for some really fun combat tricks too. But just completely undercosted, overpowered piece of equipment. All right, so we've got a Savage Born Hydra. It's X mana cost, one red, one green. Double strike comes into the battle play comes into battlefield with uh, that many plus one plus one counters, and then you can put more on it as a sorcery. All right, so pretty typical Hydra. Ooh. Now I know this has been reprinted a lot, but Grim Lava Mancer, especially with this art, is just so nice. I remember when this came out. I think it was, I think it was Odyssey Block. No, it was Torment. Torment is the original set that Grim Lava Mancer came out of, and oh man, just so much power on such a tiny little stick. All right, so we have a foil cathartic reunion featuring, you know, Chandra. And then we've got a Twisted Abomination, which this was Scourge again. But yeah, big creatures with interesting swamp cycling, plane cycling, all that kind of stuff, forest cycling. All right, so I'm going to put these in their sleeves real quick, and I'll let you do the next one. I'll put Grim too. Okay, go for it. Now, obviously, reprinting these is going to lower the overall cost in the long run because there's more supply for the same demand, but in the end, it allows people to play more magic, and I'm all about it. I'm not here, like, I'm not a magic options trader. I'm a magic player. Having fun cards and having cool cards is just part of it, you know? A big part of it, but agreed. Ooh, that's cool art on a human soldier token. Yeah, look at that. I don't think I've ever seen that art. All right, so another Sanctum Gargoyle, Ancient Stirrings, Defiant Salvager, Pyrite Spellbomb, Fairy Mechanist, Mechanist, You're a Surge Node. You're a Surge Node. Steel Sabotage, and Fortify. So those are going to be the commons. We've got a Master Splicer. Mishra's, Mishra's bobble. Bo bobble. Huh. There's another free card, you know, just like Manamorphos. Look at like the top card of Target Star card. Deck. Ooh, Thirst, Thirst for, for knowledge. knowledge. Draw three cards, then discard two cards unless you discard an artifact card. That's the original artwork, too. Huh. Very nice. All right, so then we've got... Don't want to rest my arm on the uh, rares. We've got a dual caster mage. When the center's the battlefield, copy target instant or sorcery spell. You may choose new targets for the spell, or for the copy. Okay. We have a Lux Cannon. P pay four, tap it, put a charge counter on it, tap it, uh, remove three charge counters, destroy target permanent. Mm. Okay. And then for foils, we have a Relic Runner and a Supernatural Stamina. Okay, very cool. Put these back over here. We're down to the last three cards. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I also have a, that similar problem, Brian, as far as not recognizing so many of these cards, but I quit uh, around Zendikar, and I missed a lot of Shadowmoor as well, but Zendikar was the last time I bought magic cards for a long time, and then I sold all my cards, so, I mean, I've told you that before, but this is more for everybody else, but basically, a lot of these are kind of new, and they're very interesting. Um, if they are better than I originally see, I'm going to look at them and see if there's any cool broken combos or anything associated with them, but we'll see. Anyway, our token is a Thopter. 1-1 one, one flying Thopter token. We got a Conclave Naturalist, Supernatural Stamina, Cast Down, another Reunion, Metallic Rebuke, so it has Improvise. Your artifacts can help you cast this spell. Each artifact that you tap after you're done activating mana abilities pays for one colorless, and then it counters target spell unless its controller pays through. So it's like a affinity um, mana drain. Okay. Another fidget spinner, peace strider, and crib swap. And then we get into our uncommons. We've got spring leaf drum. If we tap an untapped creature you control, it adds one mana of any color. Which is pretty nice. Lightning Grease, that's a really good card. Equipped creature has haste and shroud, and it has equip zero. And then Pyre Wild Shaman, and I sense a land underneath this one, so put these away. Let's not even look at it yet. Let's not look. Wait for it. And what did we get? We got Mystic Gate. Okay, another one of the filter lands for blue white this time. Uh, I've seen online where they've had mana misprints on these, where they've had the wrong filter symbol. 
Um, so I'm glad that we didn't have that issue. And then we've got another sculpting steel. And for our foils, we've got Eager Construct and More Crept Banshee. Okay. Down to our last two packs today. And then we'll open the box toppers. I'm excited to see the box toppers. I am too. I hope it's something cool. Yeah. I've, like I said, I've never seen one opened and I've never gotten a chance to like see one being opened. So cool. it'll be interesting to see. All right. So token, another mere token or myrrh, however you want to pronounce it. Ooh, so we've got a, axe. yep, another lightning axe, another predator, glaze fiend, uh, goblin, gavalier, gavalier, cavalier. Nope. G a v e l e e r. Gavalier. Gavalier. Huh. Like it's got a gavel in its hand. Yeah. <laughs> Chromatic star, magnifying glass, um, Argivian restoration, and a skin wing. I hope so too, Brian. Thank you. I hope it is also Force of Will, but I will be okay if it's not. Ariac Salvagers, Enlarge. I really, I've always liked the art on, Enlar on Enlarge, the just big cat coming down into the merfolk place. <laughs> Enlarge. Um, Enlarge. Ooh, okay. And then into Rares. We have Adaptive Atana. A you can do it. I can't. Adaptive? Automaton. Automaton. Ah! Hey! It did it. <laughs> As this enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Um, this is the chosen type in addition to other types, to its other types, and then other creatures you control the chosen type get plus one, plus one. And then a Ooh. Blinkmouth Nexus. Very nice. Okay. It's another man land. Gotta yep. love it. So we have a fairy and a fierce for the... Uh, Foils. All okay. right. Last Let's pack, see. and then the back box toppers, and then we'll decide who gets the free pack. So far, it's down to since Atlantis Comics and Games went ahead and opted out. It's down to Paladin, Bry, and Oofrost. Oofrost, you still there? Because oh wait, I gotta go over here. If if not, uh, it's fine. We'll figure out how to give it to you. We'll message you on Twitch. But. Let's see. Let's see what's in this last pack. Do we skip straight to rares? No. No. Delayed gratification <laughs> or disappointment. Either one. Got a germ, creature token. You're a germ. You're a germ. Figure it out. All right. I'm spare parts. Skin brand. We got another. We almost got, I think, a full set. I don't know if we got a full play set of every Urza's land, but that's pretty good. You know, we kept joking about Surge Node, but I never read it. So it enters the battlefield with six charge counters on it, and then we can. Remove a charge counter to put a sir, put a charge counter on target artifact. Okay, sure. Doop, 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 doop. All right. Ooh, got crop rotation, which is just such a good land card. Like, I think this had place also in Tron, as far as you can sacrifice a land to go get yourself that Urza land that you're missing, and just ramp like crazy. But back in the day, like crop rotation into Gaia's Cradle was just so strong. Obliet, which with the recent errata on this, this is an Ice Age card, I'm pretty sure, or an Alliances card, even allows you to successfully remove your enemy's commander without giving them the option of putting it back in the command zone. So you can Obliet, and it stays in play, and as long as it stays in play, target creature is phased out. So it's neither in the graveyard or exiled. It gets to stick around for a long time. And then our last uncommon is Lightning Greaves. Oh, was it Arabian Nights? Thank you. Okay, we've got a Flooded Grove. Very nice. And then a Sword of War and Peace for a Mythic. Not a bad last card for the pack. Oh, man. Very nice. Sword of War and Peace. So, equipped creature gets plus two, plus two protection from red and from white. And whenever it deals combat damage... It deals damage to that player equal to the number of cards in their hand, and then you gain one life for each card in your hand. So very nice mythic there. We're going to sleeve it up in a minute. Same thing with Flooded Grove here. And probably Blink Moth Nexus. <laughs> and then our foils are Revoke Existence and Crushing Vines. Okay. Now, let me sleeve these last few cards up. These are purple matte non-reflective dragon shields because 
you know, whenever we're able to play Paper Magic in person again, we want to be able to see, but not see the cards that are coming up next. No reflections, no cheating. But very cool. Very, very cool. Last thing we're going to do is open our Double Masters box topper. Let's see what we got. Drum roll, please. It's hard to be gentle opening this pack of simply two cards, but because you don't want to pull too hard or bend a card that can possibly be very nice. All right, so first card is Phyrexian Metamorph. Uh, I have never seen this card before, so give me a second. You may have Phyrexian Metamorph enter the battlefield as a copy of target artifact or creature on the battlefield, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. And that art is pretty, pretty cool. cool. And full art, Phyrexian Metamorph. Okay, cool. And then the last one is a Noble Hierarch. Okay, that is definitely a worthwhile box topper, in my opinion. Noble Hierarch is a great mana ramp creature that helps out all your other creatures and an expensive one at that. So let's get those into nice. sleeves. And then we'll figure out who gets the free pack of you Double gonna, Masters. You gonna roll for it? Yeah, I'm gonna roll. I just, I think all I need is a coin flip. <laughs> oh. You got a two-sided die in there, there uh, AKA a coin? I do not. All right, give me a, a four-sided die and we'll okay. just divide by two. I mean, there's one in there at least. All right. So we're going to do this real simple. So it's going to be a D4, as you can see. Very easy to read D4, even with the stream. Uh, Paladin, you're going to be a 2 or a 4. And UV Frost, you're going to be a 1 or a 3. And we're going to roll it right now. No takes these backsies, and you guys get a free pack of double masters. Now, no, uh, if it gets cocked in some way or rolls off the table, it doesn't count, and we'll re roll it. But, so Paladin, two or a four, Frost, one or a three. It looks like it's going to go to UV Frost. It's got a nice three. little three right there. So, sorry. Brian, I, I might do this again, might open another box of these, just because I had so much fun opening Paper Magic for the first time in so many years. If I do, I will definitely have another pack to give away. But uh, if UV Frost does not respond to messages, it will also probably go to you. But I will send them a message and let them know that they won the free pack of Double Masters. Otherwise, that's going to be it for the stream today, guys. We got some pretty good stuff. We got some really cool box toppers. We got Sword of War and Peace, lots of cool lands. We got Karn, Academy Ruins, Stoneforge Mystic, Trinisphere. Lots of really interesting stuff. Well, some, some stuff that's not wonderful, but at the same time, that's magic for you. You know, it can't be all packs full of force of will. But thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for everybody that stopped by. And thanks, Atlantis, again, for letting us post in the Discord that we were showing this stuff off. And uh, again... We're going to be streaming D&D later on tonight. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be debauched. It's going to be super fun. So, um, again, thank you, everybody, for watching, and hopefully we'll see you guys later that night. Yeah, I'm glad you caught it too, bud. But um, I will be messaging Uvi Frost, and if I don't hear back after, let's say, a week, we'll go and give a nice little consolation prize to Paladin Bry, which you're here all the time, so that won't be hard. But uh, thanks, guys, again. I appreciate it. Catch you guys later tonight. Hey guys, it's me, Naked, and I just wanted to say thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please consider hitting that like button, and if you want to see more Cardboard on Cardboard Crime, please feel free to subscribe as more videos are on the way. You can also catch me live every Monday through Thursday starting at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on twitch.tv slash Naked Just follow the link below. Thanks again for watching, and farewell for now.